Hi, I'm Maria of Pink Pony Design and today I want to talk to you about interfacing vinyl. This is a question I get a lot since many of my patterns actually include interfacing vinyl. I do this because I often find that the vinyl isn't stable enough on its own. It's beautiful and quite uh, heavy wearing but just not doesn't have that stability I want for my bags. So I made a video about this a while back. But the thing was, I didn't show all the ways of doing this. For example, you can run into problems using the method I showed in the other video when you want to interface with the foam interfacing, for example. So I'm going to show you that here today, as well as my method that I showed in the other video, since uh, it's old and I have some nice new fancy equipment now. So I'm hoping the quality of this video will be nicer. Anyway, let's begin. Uh, we have our vinyl. And uh, let's start with using a simple uh, um, Foster Fuse interfacing. Uh, this is Foster Fuse Lite. It's a fairly thin interfacing, but it will give that vinyl that extra bit of stability you might want for some bags. This is a two-sided interfacing, so it has glue on both sides, meaning when I press this, I will need to cover this side, otherwise I will get glue on my iron. So I start with my, um, with my, <laughs> sorry, uh, with my uh, vinyl right side down. I make sure that I haven't pressed a lot of things before this so that my um, pressing mat is already hot because if it is, I might actually melt the vinyl when I start pressing it from behind. Uh, most vinyls can be pressed from the back. So if you receive a very wrinkly vinyl, you can usually just press it using medium heat from the back. To work out those wrinkles. Anyway, let's begin. So I take my interfacing, I center it on the vinyl and then I bring out my uh, baking sheet or baking paper. This is the kind you put in the oven uh, when you bake cookies. The pack looks like this. Oh, upside down, sorry. Uh, it looks like this uh, and it's just the regular stuff that can stand up to being in the oven. So therefore it can stand up to the heat from our iron. Okay, so let's begin. We place this on top of the interfacing and the vinyl. And then we press from the back for as long as it will take to get this to set. So maybe some 10 seconds or so. If it's a heavier interfacing, like this is the fast to fuse light, so it's not very thick. Therefore the heat should penetrate fairly quickly. Whereas if I had used the Fast Diffuse Heavy or, for example, Pelham Peltex or similar, I might have to hold a lot longer to get the heat to penetrate through the interfacing and to the glue on the other side of the interfacing. As otherwise I will end up with the interfacing stuck on the yeah, baking paper but not on the vinyl. So let's take a look here. If we lift a little carefully, does it... Oh, it looks like it's starting to stick. I'll give it a few more seconds and we'll see if it has stuck properly. thing with this also is generally I would press this and then I would leave it to cool completely for maybe 20 minutes or so before I lift this off because then you allow the glue to properly adhere to the vinyl saving you a lot of trouble <laughs> when you make the bag as if it doesn't adhere properly um, it can lift off during construction and that's not fun at all. But now since I'm showing you this, I'm just going to yeah, cheat a little and take it off earlier than I would otherwise. So here you have it. Your interfacing is completely fused with the vinyl. And the vinyl is still beautiful and pretty from the right side. So there's no damage to this vinyl from pressing this uh, glue interfacing on. So this is super handy and uh, I do this for many on my bags just to be able to get that stability. If you compare this one with this one, I hope you can see that this one is would give a very slouchy bag. But this one will give that little bit of stability you might want for a semi-slouchy bag, for example. Whereas if you wanted this to be super stiff, like for my Bergen bag, for example, then you would go for the heavy stuff, like Fast Diffuse Heavy or Pelham Peltex 72 or similar. Anyway, sometimes you don't want to use this kind of interfacing. 
uh, that has the glow on. Or, for example, you want to use an interfacing like a foam interfacing. And uh, this here is by Anis, soft and stable. And it's a foam interfacing. And if I were to do <laughs> uh, like I did with this and fuse it from the back, I would literally melt this interfacing. It could not stand up to the heat required to transfer um, the heat from this side to this side and uh, adhere a glue. So then we have to think a little outside the box. So for example, if I don't want to quilt it, which is one way to adhere it, I want to attach it properly with help of a thin interfacing. And then this here is uh, Villeen, Villeen. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, to be honest. But here, let me show you. This, this is Villeen G700 and it's a thin woven interfacing and it has glue only on one side. And I use this for my linings and for many applications, but for now we're gonna use it to adhere our uh, soft and stable to this vinyl piece. So again, we center the interfacing on the vinyl. We place this with the glue side down on top here. And since I'm going to be using, sorry, I did not mean to stretch in front of the camera. I'm, I'm still working this out. Uh, with glue uh, down towards the uh, pressing mat, I'm going to put my baking paper underneath so that if, for example, this were to stick outside, I don't ruin my, my pressing mat. I only <laughs> get glue on the actual pa baking paper. Anyway, I start this by fusing the middle uh, to the, the foam. So I just press this lightly to make sure it's uh, centered. And of course I managed to push it out of the way. But that's what happens when you film, right? Something has to go wrong. And there we have it. So now it's fused to the foam, uh, but not to the, uh, to the vinyl. And now we're gonna adhere it to the seam allowance here. So we just carefully press this down and leave it so that it really attaches. And pushing this edge to edge like this could be a great way to actually get it to stick all the way down. And um, I'm just gonna continue all the way around my piece, um, like this. And like you can see there, there was a small piece sticking out, so I'm glad I had the baking paper underneath. Otherwise I would have had glue on my pressing mat. Oh. Didn't really get that. There we go. And I continue all the way around. And this pressing from the back, like I said, nearly every kind of vinyl can take this. So you generally don't have to worry about ruining your vinyl since you're pressing actually on the vinyl here. But still, if you're very concerned or if it's a very delicate vinyl, I've even done this to 3D vinyl, I'll be honest with you. So uh, most interface, uh, sorry, most vinyls can take this. And there we have it. So here we have uh, interfacing, as you can see, on our vinyl. And it will lay perfectly still during our construction of whatever bag or whatever we're making, since this is perfectly glued down. And it's super easy to follow this seam allowance as well during construction now. So these are my two favorite methods for attaching uh, interfacing to vinyl. But as uh, a third option, you can also use, um, if you only need a temporary hole, you can use a spray glue. For example, if you're quilting your vinyl, but just wanna hold it in place during the quilting, then uh, spray glue is uh, great. I use 505 basting spray, uh, but you can use whatever brand you're comfortable with. Anyway, Thank you so very much for watching. Uh, I hope you will have fun interfacing your vinyl bags. And if you have any questions, just ask me in the comments and I'd love if you give my video a thumbs up. Thank you so very much. Bye.